apprentice to Jesus class, we're going to begin today to talk about baptism. And I've titled it, Let's Begin. Uh, in a sense, baptism is a kind of beginning. It's not the only beginning. It's not even the beginning of the beginning, but it is a beginning. And we need to talk about the role that this initiation plays in Christian life. First observation I want to make is that baptism is a response. Okay, Baptism is not magic. I need you to understand that very clearly. Baptism is not magic. Baptism is magic is a tool by which you manipulate supernatural forces. So if I do this ritual, then this evil spirit has to obey me. Magic is a tool of manipulation. Well, baptism is not a tool by which we get God to forgive us. As if, if I do the ritual right, he has to forgive me of my sins. Baptism is not manipulation, but baptism is not magic. Baptism is a response to something God has already done. 1 Peter chapter 3, 18 and following. For, just, uh, for Christ also suffered once for sins, the righteous for the unrighteous, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit. Because they formerly did not obey, when God's patient waited in the days of Noah while the ark was being prepared, in which a few, that is eight persons, were brought safely through water. Baptism, which corresponds to this, now saves you, not as a removal of dirt from the body, but as an appeal to God for a good conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven as at the right hand of God with angels, authorities, and powers having been subjected to him. So on the one hand, the text is actually pretty straightforward. It, it does say baptism saves. So if you ask me, Ben, point blank question, does baptism save? I'm going to have to say yes. Why? Because that's what Peter said. Baptism also saves you. The question is, how does it save? In what way does it save? Does it save in isolation? And as we said, is it a magic trick that gets God to do something for me? And the answer is not at all. Not even a little. And if you read this text in its context, it makes it very clear. Like something much, much bigger is going on. Christ himself has come and died so that you can be forgiven. Christ himself is seated at the right hand of God after the resurrection and authority and power. That's the big story. And then on the small scale, yeah, you get to participate in that when you reenact that story through baptism. So while baptism saves, it does so only in response to God's saving action. And the comparison is to Noah. Uh, does Noah have any role to play in his life? Well, yeah, he's a faithful guy. He does good things. But ultimately, Noah didn't flood the world. Noah didn't save himself in, in any meaningful sense. I don't care how big a boat you build. If God wants to flood you and destroy you, you're a goner, right? Noah, he participates. He does what God says. But in no way do you tell the Noah and the flood story and think, boy, that Noah was really clever. You get to the end and you say, wow, look at what God did. And that's the story of our salvation. The big story is Jesus and what he's done. Baptism is simply our response to that. It's us saying, amen. It's us saying, God, be praised for what he's done in Christ Jesus. And now I participate. Um, another question I get asked about baptism, is it like a moment of significance? Is it a beginning or an end? And the answer is yes. Um, maybe not like you're thinking, though. Romans chapter 6 and verse 4 says, We were buried, therefore, with him by baptism into death, in order that, just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. So is there something happening, an end of one thing and a beginning of something new that happens in baptism. Yeah, that's the whole symbol. That's the whole point of it, right? Uh, we wouldn't want to mix metaphors here. The, the idea is, yeah, something dies in the same way Jesus died on his cross. Something in us dies, and then something comes back to life in the same way Jesus is risen from the dead. So in that sense, it's the end of something and the beginning of something new, Okay. Uh, it's not the finish line of a race. It's not the end in the sense that, okay, we're done, go home. Uh, that's certainly not the case. There's still a lot to be done as I continue to participate in the discipleship of Jesus Christ, as I learn how to better serve God 
and become more like his son. That continues throughout my life. You don't magically stop sinning. You don't magically stop struggling with doubt and fear and anxiety. It doesn't, it's not a magic trick, okay? Again, not magic. But it is a moment that you look back at and say, something happened there. A change was made. A difference took place in my life. It had meaning and significance. And what was old went away. Is it a beginning of a new life? Sure, it's, it's a beginning. That's not to say God wasn't working on you before that. I absolutely think he was. But it's, it's a kind of initiation. It's a moment you look at and say, there, there's something changed. And it's helpful in that way. Um, another observation we make uh, in talking about baptism in Churches of Christ, we're fairly emphatic that we believe in what's called believer's baptism, uh, as opposed to uh, infant baptism. In some other churches, baptism takes place at, as an infant, and then later in life, that person believes and goes through confirmation, and their faith is kind of attached to their previous baptism at that point. Um, in Churches of Christ, we would say, no, that's not quite the way the Bible describes it. Uh, instead, it's believers, people who already believe, who are baptized, and that there is a deep connection between faith and baptism, which shouldn't be separated in that way. So a passage that comes to mind is Mark 16, 16. Um, footnote here for the curious Bible student, you're going to have a footnote in your Bible that says this isn't a um, reliable part of the end of Mark's gospel or something like that. That's a whole class for another day, and I'd be happy to talk about that. Uh, suffice it to say that I'm, I'm happy with the wording of this verse as it is, and I'll use it in this lesson. Um, if you don't like that verse and you say, I don't want it in my Bible, uh, I'll find you another verse that says the exact same thing because the Bible pretty consistently connects faith and baptism. But for our purposes in Mark 16, 16, Jesus says, whoever believes and is baptized will be saved, but whoever does not believe will be condemned. So Jesus connects those ideas. Faith and baptism are supposed to go together. Um, every example, if you read the book of Acts, every example in the book of Acts of baptism is associated with faith in Christ Jesus. Person believes, person is baptized. Person believes, person is baptized. It's so consistent, it's really hard to ignore. And so those elements seem to us to be connected, and I would be, uh, you'd have to really give me a good argument to separate something that acts, connects so strongly, and seems to be so connected in the, the gospel of Christ. And so there's a reason we studied this class in the way that we did. We talked about faith, we talked about repentance and, and the good confession, because we're putting, we're front-loading faith and saying that is the first step. And baptism then again follows as this response to our faith and what God has done. So then we might ask the question, when then should I be baptized? Then I've heard about baptism, I'm curious about it. Um, is someone going to walk up and say, hey, it's time for you to be baptized? I mean, how does that work? When should I be baptized? Our answer would be, um, a person should be baptized when they are moved to believe in Jesus Christ and to begin a new life in him. Okay, But it is a, a moment of initiation. It's something that says, now I want to start doing this. Um, before, maybe, it, maybe you were able to keep it kind of hypothetical in the back of your head. Yeah, I, I believe in Christianity, but it hasn't moved you to actually take an action yet, a deliberate step. Baptism is that step. Baptism is you saying, yes, now I want to reenact the gospel of Jesus Christ. Why would you be baptized? For all the reasons we just said, uh, because it connects to salvation, because it's the beginning of something new and the end of something old, because it's uh, connected to your faith and a response to God saving action. Uh, but in future lessons, we're going to talk a little more about baptism and, and make two more points that I'll just tease now. Baptism imitates Jesus and reenacts his gospel. Baptism is a way to retell the story of the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. And number two, baptism is the connection between the gospel story you read and the sins in your own life. It makes a connection, a gateway between those two. So if you stay tuned for the next couple of lessons, we'll talk about baptism some more and discuss the ins and outs of that.